What's up guys and welcome back to another episode on Architect Network and in this video I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how to create animations with Grasshopper and we're going to set up the Architect Network animation challenge. All right guys, so if you've been following the Architect Network Instagram page, uh, you'll see that we've been doing these kind of Architect Network uh, animations, these weekly animations. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you can check it out below on our Instagram page in the link. Um, but we've just been kind of using uh, our simple logo in Rhino and Grasshopper to kind of experiment with Grasshopper animation. It's always been something I've been interested in. I'm absolutely no expert in, in animations with Grasshopper, but I've been using it as a way to kind of have a bit of fun and play with the animation part of Grasshopper, which a lot of people, a lot of people don't really realize is there. Um, and it's a quite nice way to tell the story of what the script is doing or, or like, you know, the story behind the project if it's computationally driven. We recently posted on our Instagram page, you know, what do you guys think of these animations? Because I was kind of like, is anyone still looking at these? And we got uh, way more positive feedback than I thought. And it got us thinking that the whole point of Architect Network was to, you know, share information, educate, promote collaboration. And uh, that doesn't really work if it's just me uh, and the other guys creating, if, if it's just us creating animations. So what I thought would be cool to do is show you guys how we've been creating these animations so far, the basics of creating animations through Rhino and Grasshopper. And that way you guys will be able to download the model. You can follow the link below to, to uh, get all the information for the challenge, send it back to us and we will repost on the Instagram page. We can give you some feedback if you're kind of just starting out in the world of uh, animations in, in Grasshopper. Uh, and make this a bit more of a collaboration, collaborative uh, experiment with the Architect Network Challenge. So from here, I'll take you through a little tutorial about how I made some of these animations and the basics of creating uh, animations using Rhino and Grasshopper. If it's something you're already familiar with and you're already a pro at Grasshopper animations or, or animations in some other program, you can feel free to skip to the end of this uh, video or you can hit the link below and find out a little bit more about the parameters of the challenge. Uh, otherwise, let's go ahead, let's jump into Rhino and let's get started. All right, so we're now in Rhino and we have the exact same file that you guys will have when you download the link. Uh, this is everything that's in the model. So we have our ATN logo in 3D. If you look under layers, you'll see that there's a few different options, right? So right now we have uh, the logo in pixel form. So these are kind of larger pixels. They actually overlap each other. Uh, we have the mini pixels, the kind of uh, subdivision of those larger ones. Uh, there's a few other ones like the center line of the, the logo, the outline, the pixel outline. So there's a few things to get you started. Uh, like I said, not that you have to use exactly this geometry, but it's kind of fun to use it as a base and you can maybe grab the points or grab the curve and, and completely reinvent it. It's a loose guide, but uh, I, the gist of it is to use the logo, right? So uh, what we're going to go through is actually, I was looking through which animation to take you guys through. And I think I'm going to do the very first one we actually did in Grasshopper. So uh, if you look online, it's actually, if you go onto our Instagram page, it's all the way down at the bottom. This guy, it's not the first one, it's the second one. Uh, this little fun one where you basically take the pixels and kind of move them out. It's super simple, but it's um, it's actually one of my favorites still to this day. It's kind of explodes them and then brings them back in. So that's the one we're going to go through and uh, give you guys the basics of how to do it yourselves. Um, so yeah, here we go. We've got our uh, geometry. Of course, the first thing we're going to do is open up Grasshopper. Now, I already have the script open, so um, I'm just going to show you kind of how it works initially, and then we'll we'll go into actually creating it from scratch. Um, so as you can see, the script is kind of basic, and with these animations, I'm usually inputting the geometry, like something from from the logo. Uh, I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then I'm outputting it through uh, the simple 
uh, preview, the custom preview component. And of course, usually I'm viewing this in like Arctic mode with material. There you go, you can see uh, it's uh, viewing there. So I'm gonna turn off the base geometry because I obviously don't want that to happen. And the, the key thing for uh, Grasshopper animations and how you do animations in Grasshopper is that it's all kind of controlled uh, using a slider. So uh, I usually have to work out a way that a, sli a single slider is essentially uh, driving the effects. Now that slider can also be controlling other sliders and that kind of thing, but the animation component to Grasshopper is linked to the actual slider itself. So you see here, I have this value, which is causing our pixels to move uh, like 100 millimeters, I think in this case, whatever that unit is, it, it doesn't really matter as long as it, uh, it makes sense in your viewport. But the way that you actually create animation is through the slider. So if you right click on a slider, there's a animate option here. And this is where the, the simple gist of it is that basically you can assign a viewport to it, a resolution, uh, you know, name and all that kind of stuff. And essentially Grasshopper will uh, run the, the script, it will run the slider from uh, start to finish. And if we go back to the animate component, it's going to be, it's essentially going to subdivide that and create how many frames you, you want to create. In most of our cases, we're creating 200 frames. So it basically takes your slider and divides it by 200 and creates an image uh, at every uh, one of those points. So that's how the the um, animations are uh, essentially created. It's, it's quite basic. Um, and we're just using, oh, I've accidentally set it off there. So you can see it's generating frame one of 200. So this one's not like super, um, super hard to do. In fact, I'm actually overriding uh, an, old, an old one I did. The other unfortunate thing is that you can't really like uh, stop it. You can see I can kind of play with it. Um, but, you know, this is just going to run. In this case, it's not so long. So estimated timeless, we've got 30 seconds. I'll forward, fast forward this in the actual video uh, so we're not hanging around for another 30 seconds. Okay, so I accidentally set that guy off. But uh, as you can, you can kind of get a gist of uh, what was happening, it goes through the slider and it basically subdivides the slider by however many frames you uh, want to create. So uh, that's the basics of uh, the overview of it. So now let's start from scratch and uh, let's create a new Grasshopper file, and we're going to start uh, the script completely from scratch. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just grab a BREP component. Uh, the other reason why I chose this uh, particular animation, because I'm not using any plugins. I think most of this stuff is just uh, typical Grasshopper components. Uh, let me reorientate myself. Let's grab, let's stick with the original one. Let's let's grab the bigger pixels in the file. We're going to bring them onto our canvas by right-clicking set multiple B reps. And there we go. We've got our uh, B reps, uh, our pixels. We can kind of be done with that. I actually don't need to see that anymore. I can just use the preview. Um, okay. So the gist of what we're going to do is we need to grab these and move them in a kind of random direction. Um, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create like a random uh, vector. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is uh, generate this random uh, the, or generate a list of random numbers. So the first thing I want to do, or in fact, what we could do just to start off is like, we're going to need the move component. That's going to be the key. Uh, component to get to so we can kind of get ahead of ourselves a little bit. You can see uh, it's just going to move by default. It will move it by 10 units, right? What I'll do is I'll just turn that off so it's not in the background. So basically we need to work out everything in between. So the logic of what we're going to do is we're going to grab a, a list length. Um, let me add uh, by by focals onto the de onto the canvas so you can guys can follow along. I always forget to do that. Um, okay, so let's rock and roll. So uh, how many B-reps do we have? We can hover over it. We can see 114 B-reps. So this is gonna uh, count that number for me. 
you'll see 114 uh, numbers in, in our list. What I want to do is I actually want to uh, triple that because um, what we're going to want to do at the end is create a vector, right? And we're going to do it by, uh, it needs three things, an X, uh, 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 what am I trying to say? Uh, an, <laughs> an X direction, a Y direction, and a, a Z value is what I'm trying to say. Completely losing my words today. Um, and so we're going to need to ge generate a random uh, number for each one of those. So in order for my 140, 14 boxes, I'm going to need three uh, random numbers to create a vector. So what I'm going to do here is um, just times that by three. Little tip, if you double click on the canvas, type in three, it'll automatically create a slider with that number for you. N nice, little, uh, nice little tip there. The other thing that we're going to need to start us off is that slider. If you remember at the beginning of our, um, at the beginning of the script, so you can just, like we did before, you can type in the numbers. But what we can actually do, we want a range. So in my case, I want it to go from uh, 0 to 100. That will actually work if I just type in 100. Uh, in this case, just because it, it's like uh, the end of the spectrum. Otherwise, you can uh, be explicit with that. And you can create a range by saying 0. And then you go smaller than 100. And that way, it'll create a uh, Exactly the same thing, but it's a little more explicit. So you could do like a random number like one, two, five or something like that. So basically this is just the amount that the pixel is going to move. So at the beginning of the, the animation, they're not going to move at all, right? Because it's zero. And then as it grows up, the pixels will start to move 100 mil, uh, 11 millimeters, 20, et cetera, et cetera, to the end where they're the furthest that they're out. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is use this to create a domain. Uh, so we're going to use construct domain. And what I want to do is basically create, uh, take this number and create the negative and the positive number to construct a domain. So the reason why I'm doing that, I'm going to use the negative component. Uh, I'm going to plug that in there and then the positive one in there. So at the end of it, I have a domain of like minus 100 to 100. As I slide this down, you see the domain is going to be getting smaller and smaller. The reason for this is because if we go to like shaded view, I want to be moving the pixels. If it was only a positive number, it would only move in the positive Z, the positive Y, the positive X. I want it to move, be completely random so it can move positive x and negative x, positive y, negative y, positive z, negative z. And so that is going to be what creates a little more uh, randomness to uh, the script. So now I can use the random uh, component. And this guy works by just, uh, it's asking for a range, which we've created here using our uh, domain. So this is our range. Uh, I have the number of random values which is here. And then the seed, I'm just going to leave as it is. The seed is basically like uh, rolling the dice again. You're kind of just mixing up uh, a, a different kind of randomization pattern. Um, but in this case, I think uh, you, you can obviously change it and you'll get a slightly different effect for each one. It might be a fun thing to do to create many different random uh, animations. Um, so we're almost there. We just need to now take this list. And so now we have this list of tons of random numbers, but I kind of need to partition them out into threes uh, so that I can kind of uh, separate them out here. So we can use the partition tool, the partition list. So this is going to take our list and subdivide it into uh, three. We could use the same uh, component here, the same input here. And that's going to take our list and divide it by threes. We know that it's going to be divisible by three because uh, of what we're doing here. We times it. This slider we should, we'll never need to use, uh, change. Um, but, you know, it's kind of, it's always nice to connect. If one thing's controlling it, you can use it later on in the script. Uh, now all we need to do is uh, take this list and I'm going to grab, use the list item component to take my list. And then, so now the list is grafted. So um, 
each one of my branches contains the three random numbers that I need my x, y, and z uh, coordinate. So um, I'm going to use the list item to grab each one of those individually. Uh, the list item is obviously a, a, a classic grasshopper component. Uh, a nice way that you can do this is if you zoom in, you'll see the widget. Uh, I think these are called like little widgets. Um, actually gets a little bit bigger and you have this plus component. So if you hit that, you, what you're doing is you're actually grabbing the first item in the list, the second item in the list, and the third item in the list, which is kind of handy. Then you can see this kind of lines up perfectly. I'll have my three random values going in into there. So we can see here, uh, you know, these numbers are not really going to mean too much to me, but you can see I've got these random list of numbers coming in. Uh, and then out the back of it comes my uh, vector, which is a vector is just a combination of uh, your three x, y, z coordinates. Um, and then we are almost there. So the last thing I want to do is now I have a list that is grafted. And then I also have my original list, which is not grafted. It's one branch of 144 items in. This is 114 branches with one item in each branch. So I want to flatten uh, this parameter as it's coming out. And then if I plug this guy in, uh, I'm going to turn on uh, the preview. Let's go ahead and we should start to see. Oh, I have that guy turned off, right? That's why I'm not seeing things. I actually like to use this, uh, this kind of uh, view parameter where if you hit the green guy, you'll only see the components that you have selected. So like I'll come and select that, but you can also come here and still change, uh, um, you know, mess around with the slider. So there you go. You kind of get that random, uh, you can see that the script is working as we intended. We've got this random movement of the blocks. Some of the blocks kind of cluster together, and that's just, I think that's just the randomness. You know, computers, uh, it's just a random number, and they happen to kind of stay together. If we wanted to get rid of that, we could change the seed, for example, and that might uh, mix things up. Uh, but we need one, one last component to uh, finish our script, and that's the preview. Uh, Things called custom preview. So we're going to take our geometry, put it into the geometry input, and then we can also give it a material. And you can do this by simply just grabbing a swatch, a color swatch. And we're just going to go for this particular one. Let's just go black, keep it simple. Uh, and this will only preview, this is the equivalent of, uh, you know, it's a rendered uh, material. So we won't see this in the shader view. But we will see this if we go to Arctic Material, we can actually see that. So now the kind of grasshopper preview, I don't really even need to have on. In fact, you can turn it off. Might save you a little bit of um, memory or, or whatever on your computer. So that's the basic script. Um, and then, of course, we are ready to go and set off our animation. But of course, before you do that, you want to come to the end here and just make sure uh, move your script and make sure that it's doing uh, exactly what you want it to. Sometimes I've created an animation like halfway for whatever reason, everything disappears because at 50, the script just doesn't quite work out or, or something like that. So just make sure, do the slider and make sure your animation is uh, moving correctly. Okay, so finally we're ready to do the actual animation part and you've kind of had a little preview of this already. But this is the slider that's going to be driving our animation. Uh, so we just right click on this guy. We're going to hit animate. You want to make sure that your view is kind of set up in the background. Just so you, you know that uh, it's set to the right um, view settings and all that kind of stuff. And then we're going to go and find, first of all, find the folder that you want this guy to go in. So I have my animation tutorial folder and I've just made an image folder. So that's where all the images are going to go. Uh, I don't care about the naming. All I care about that it is numbered. It is important that I numbered. So I just leave that as is. Uh, the BMP file is fine. You can obviously change that to a JPEG or a PNG, whatever it is you, you want to export. And then here's where you can set uh, what viewport you're using. In this case, I have my animation view. 
uh, I'm using uh, the actual view. In fact, I think I want to uh, come here and just reset the view so it's centered on my uh, Rhino viewport. Go back to animate. Um, so yeah, I've got the right viewport selected. I'm going to go with the resolution of a thousand thousand. Use that as a minimum. I'm happy for you to go larger or smaller, but uh, if you're new to it, I would just stick to that. And we usually go with like a frame count of 200, but of course you can increase that. It will make it, the higher the number will be, the longer it will take, but the smoother your animation will look. There is a bit of a preview here, so you kind of get an idea of what uh, your viewport is going to look like. You can, of course, expand that so you get a full view but uh obviously i've done this a couple times so now that's it i'm gonna hit uh okay and it's just gonna go as you can see before uh it's going through very quickly this isn't a complicated scene so as you can see this is gonna take uh, a few seconds i'll fast forward this so you guys don't have to sit through it all right so as you can see we're done uh the program runs from zero to 100 and has exported all the 200 images we can now go to our folder here and there we go. You can see all of uh, play by play, frame by frame of our animation. Now, of course, the next step is to go and take this and depending on, on what you use, I've been using Premiere uh, Pro just because it's super simple. You can go and turn this into an animation or I think you can do it in Photoshop or After Effects or whatever it is uh, you are familiar with using. So just before we jump out of Rhino and Grasshopper and you know we've gone through the very basics of, of how to create an animation. The key things are is uh, obviously you have your script at the beginning which, which has the geometry that it is that you're referencing or driving and uh, the, the slider that is driving your animation and this is what you're going to use to actually uh, animate your script. So there is sometimes a bit of thinking of like how does this one slider control all of these things. Uh, happening in the middle. In the middle is your effects, what you, what your computational uh, or parametric or however you want to call it, uh, effect or motion is. That can be literally anything. That's up to you guys to input your awesome creative uh, thinking into. And then at the end, you, your output is uh, probably going to be a preview. You can also get uh, kind of um, creative with colors and you can, you can also add a unique color, for example, for every single pixel or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, but that's the basic, your, your input, your animation slider, and then your output. And then of course, setting up your viewport. So uh, in my case, I've got, you know, Arctic mode, but materials turned on, but you might have some kind of cool, uh, maybe color the background or something like that in your own Rhino viewport. Uh, I'll also be sure to put this grasshopper file in the link so you guys can uh, open it up and take a look for yourselves and, and uh, test this script out for yourself. Okay, and just to finish off the process, I'll show you what I do in Premiere. So I just open up Premiere. Uh, I'm just going to go to New Projects. Um, oh, come on. Um, I'm not going to do uh, anything special here. And in fact, I'm not going to save it. I'm just going to hit OK. Leave it all as the default settings. And then all I'm going to do is come down here to my uh, import media to start. Right click on this, import. I'm then going to go, there you go, you'll see uh, some of our previous iterations. Uh, I'm going to go to my image folder. I had to jump over to my other computer. Uh, to um, run this guy. And here I want to, this is why it's important for your frames to be numbered. You want to have this checkbox ticked for image sequence, right? So it's going to read the numbers and know that it's a sequence of images. You click OK, and then it's going to create a little, uh, it's going to package them up for you. You just drop them onto the timeline. And then what I can do is I can, uh, you know, come out here and just preview it. And for example, what I might want to do is instead of just uh, ending it where it uh, explodes, I'm going to actually bring it back together. And all I'm going to do is just um, bring this uh, over here as well. So there's now two of them. Uh, and what you can do, I usually keep it below 15 seconds so it can be on an Instagram story. Uh, you can just right click on the sequence of images, go to speed and duration. This is where you can speed it up or, or slow it down. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to reverse it, click OK, 
And then uh, if I come back to the start, I just play it, you'll see that the uh, it's actually a little bit slow. So let's speed it up as well. It's going to explode and then come back down. But it is looking a little bit slower than I expected. So let's ramp it up by 200. So it's kind of three seconds. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Did I accidentally shorten it there? So all right, let's do that again. There you go. And then we're going to take this one, speed it in the same way, but it, this one is reversed. We can just bring that to uh, that they're now match together. Click OK. And there we go. We have a little, what's that, six and a half, seven second animation. There you go. And then, of course, uh, just to finish that process, we just want to export. So we can go to File, uh, Export, Media. And then here, I just go with the H.264. And the only thing I kind of check is to the output name and the uh, file type. So in this case, uh, I'm going to go and save it to uh, the correct location. I want to save it here. At, oh, it's off screen. And I want to make sure it's a MP4. And this is just going to be called um, uh, frame. Let's call this animation 22 or two because it was number two so animation two and then uh, export that guy you know these these guys don't take too long so I'm just going to grab it from the folder here and there we go there's our animation just double click on that and let it play and there we go our animation is ready to now submit to the ATN animation challenge so now you have a little bit more knowledge on how to create your own uh, grasshopper animations. You can take that, go nuts, and take your own spin on how to animate our ATN logo. Um, the challenge itself is pretty simple. We don't have many parameters. The only thing we ask is if you go in the link below, you'll be able to actually download the geometry, the ATN uh, logo in a few different variations. And all we're asking is to, whatever you do with the logo, uh, rebuild it, reinterpret it, to just start with that geometry. Uh, in that way, everyone's starting with the same kind of uh, base point, the base geometry, and uh, it's more about kind of taking your own spin on morphing that and interpreting that, um, and go wild and uh, create your own kind of fun spin on it. You also don't have to use uh, just Rhino and Grasshopper. If you're like a whiz in uh, Cinema 4D, Houdini, Maya, After Effects, whatever it is, uh, feel free to go and uh, submit something and create uh, something using a different program. We'd love to learn also how you guys create them and uh, what's the workflow behind it. So um, as we kind of uh, receive more of them, maybe we'll do a little uh, clubhouse talk or a, or a podcast where we'll go through some of, the, some of the kind of interesting ones and the workflows behind them. Um, the other thing, ideally, there is a view saved in the Rhino file. Um, used, if, if you guys want to use that or if you can use that to create uh, at least one animation from that so that we can get an apple to apple comparison of everyone that submits the video. However, if you do think there's a cooler angle or a cooler view that kind of plays into your, your design and your idea, submit that as well and we'll uh, submit the kind of most interesting one out of the two views. Otherwise, um, the in the description below and in the in the link below, it has all the kind of guidelines for uh, how to export the video. Make sure it is a video file and not a GIF. Um, otherwise, to submit it, you either send it to us direct, send it directly to us, and um, make sure to include all your information, or post it on your own Instagram page, tag us, and again, send us your name what programs you use to create it, a little bit of description, and if you're affiliated with an office that you want to tag in it, we can do that too. That way when we post it, we'll make sure to kind of include yourselves and a little bit of information behind how you actually created it. So uh, yeah, I'm super excited to see uh, if anyone submits anything or what people submit. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully this will be a cool kind of collaboration to uh, 
expand knowledge and share a little bit around this new kind of architect animation uh, era that we're seeing online.